The assumption here is that the given program E is synthetic correct and the program is either fully or partially time annotated. Calculus. So simply type lambda calculus is an extension to the lambda calculus we've seen in the last lesson. The only difference is that in the lambda abstractions, the formal variable, formal argument variable has to be annotated with some type. So the annotation has to be provided by the programmers. Other than expression, we also have the types. It's either denoted by a lowercase t or s for simplicity. And the possible type would be the ground type, it int, bool, character, or a function type denoted by t arrow t. So the first t will be the input type, the second t will be the return type. Notice that we can um, have uh, multiple input parameter for, uh, for the function type. For example, in this case, we have a function of type that could start from t um, as input and returns if another function that takes another input of type s and finally return the, the result of type u. So because we assume that um, the parenthesis is put around um, the second and third type argument here. The third kind of symbol that we introduce is called the type environment. We use the uppercase Greek symbol gamma to denote the, uh, the environment, which is a set of mapping from expression variable or the value variable to the corresponding type. A given simply type lambda calculus program is well typed. We use typing rules to um, prove it. So we use the following set of typing rule in the shape of a type judgment denoted by gamma. Under the gamma um, type environment, we can check whether or not the given program E has the type T. So notice that this is a logical relation among the type environment, the expressions, and the type. So the typing rules are defined using a deduction system that we've seen early on in the last lesson. So the, in total, we have five rules. The first rule var handle the case where the expression E is a, a simple uh, variable X. So in this case, X is having the type T under the environment gamma if and only if we are able to find the pair, the mapping X to T in the gamma. The second rule is the abstraction rule, which says that the lambda abstractions that X of type T arrow E has a type T goes to S under the environment gamma if and only if we are able to find that or able to prove that under the new env type environment with gamma extended with mapping T with to uh, mapping X to T under which we are able to verify the the bar the expression E has a type S. The third rule talk about function application. We say E1 applied to E2 has a type S under the type environment gamma is if and only if we are able to prove that under the same gamma type environment E1 has a type T goes to S and at the same time under the same type environment gamma E2 has a type T. So this is enforced that the actual argument type is the same as the type of the formal argument from E1. The fourth rule handles the constant, which is trivial because we know that the order constant will have that primitive type. In this case, we assume that the constant C is an integer, so we have type integer. The last rule handles the oper infix operator. In this case, we assume that both operand will have the same type, which is integer, 